Hello friends, in previous classes we studied about the de Broglie's hypothesis and in earlier classes we also studied about the atomic structures. <music> Thomson model, Dalton's model, Rutherford's model, finally the Bohr's model, but unfortunately none of them were able to predict the actual position of the electron. Well, this was however been ruled out by a German scientist Heisenberg. He said that electron can never be found at a particular location. So in today's class, we'll be just exploring them in detail. So stay tuned. Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. The principle states that it is not possible simultaneously, it is not possible to know simultaneously the exactness, both the position and the momentum of a microparticle. Now, well, to make this clear, let's take an example of a ball. I have a ball which is at a location here, let's say the location x is equals to 0 and I have already told you that it moves at a speed of 5 meter per second assuming the mass of the ball to be 1 kg you already know the momentum the momentum is 5 units now if i tell you to find out the position of the ball after 2 seconds it won't be that difficult because you know that if it is moving at 5 meter per second of course after 2 seconds it would be at the distance of 10 meter from the starting position in here where your ball is located well, it looks quite simple. Now, why is this possible? This is possible because we are dealing with real world objects. For real world objects, the objects stands there and there. They don't deviate from their position. Well, how to understand this as an example? Well, if I ask you to find out the position of the ball, it was quite easy. But what if the ball was already shaky from its position? Well, then you could never say that it would reach just at the distance of 10 meters from its starting position. It would be somewhere up or down. Well, the only difference between real world objects and atomic objects is atomic objects have a wave nature. We already have studied that the wave nature for real world objects is not that significant but for subatomic particles it's very significant. So basically what we mean to say here, we mean to say here is okay if you know the exact position of the ball then definitely you don't need to worry about what its future prediction would be. But if you don't know the exact position of the particle at time zero you would never be able to tell what its future prediction would be. Now you know the concept of wave packet. Well basically a wave packet is nothing but as a cluster of waves combined together. Now this cluster of waves is nothing but as the probable position of the particle. Now here you already know that the particle is not known or there is always a uncertainty in its position. Therefore there is always uncertainty in its future prediction. Of course if there is uncertainty in its future prediction you cannot predict about the velocity. Well Heisenberg was the scientist to first discover this and thus state this law and thereby stating that it is impossible to simultaneously know the position and the momentum. Well, if you try to accurately find out the position, of course, you would not be able to find out the momentum. Whereas, if you want to find out the exact momentum, you would be losing your precision on position. So, basically, finding both the things simultaneously for subatomic particles is impossible. And the mathematical statement to this is delta x times delta p is greater than or equal to h upon 4 pi, where h is Planck's constant delta x is uncertainty in distance or you can say in position it is related to position and delta p is uncertainty with respect to momentum. So the law by Heisenberg states that the difference in the distance or the position or the uncertainty in the position times uncertainty in the momentum is always greater than or equal to h upon 4 pi. Now, well, this is how the graphical representation looks like. As you can see, as I'm trying to 
accurately determine the position, my momentum widens. Whereas if I'm trying to accurately determine the momentum, my position widens. This trade-off is always constant. Now, we know that momentum is nothing but as mass into velocity e is equals to m times v. However, mass of the objects does not change significantly, but velocity does change. So, I would say that delta x times delta times of mv greater than equal to h upon 4 pi. Now, taking mass constant or outside, this would be my equation. Delta x times delta v greater than equal to h upon 4 pi m. Now, let's take two cases for instance. Case 1, my delta x is equal to 0 or there is no uncertainty in the position, which means I am able to determine the exact position of the particle. So, in that case, my delta v would go to infinity just to maintain the constant equation. So, if my delta v is infinity, of course, there is again an uncertainty. In case 2, when I am able to determine the exact velocity, so there is no difference in the velocity or there is no deviation in the velocity, of course, my delta x would go equal to 0. So, basically, we mean to say that there is always a trade-off between the momentum and the velocity. There is a trade-off between the position and the momentum. Let's understand this by a simple experiment that was a single slit experiment. Now, this is an experimental setup for Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Here you have the two slits, here is a screen and this is the front view of the screen. Now, what we will be doing is, we would be just narrowing down the slits so that my beam gets narrower and narrower and I would be significantly watching the difference between the initial image and the final image on the front view of the screen. Now, as my slits go further, as you can see, there is no change as of now because I am still wide enough for the beam. Now. As soon as I touch the beam, here you can see what is happening. I'm actually, this is my delta x. I'm actually trying to minimize the uncertainty in the position. So what happens? The image widens. As it goes further, the image widens further. So if I'm trying to accurate the uncertainty in position, my momentum changes and hence this image goes wider. In the opposite way, if I widen the beam, what happens is the node gets eighty. Retake for single slit experiment by Heisenberg. Now, this is an experimental setup for single slit to demonstrate Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Well, to understand the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle, real-world objects are of course not the case because there we already saw there is a difference between the de Broglie wave and the size of the object. Now, but to determine the uncertainty principle, we will be using light. This is an experimental setup of a single slit wherein a laser beam is projected on a screen which passes between slits. Now, we would be narrowing down the slits further to minimize the uncertainty in the position. Now, as we know, delta x times delta v is always greater than or equal to h upon 4 pi m. So now, as my delta x goes down, my delta v goes up just to maintain the Heisenberg's uncertainty law. So what happens when delta v goes up? Well, we'll be visualizing this in the experiment. Just take an observation of the animation. Here, these are the slits. This is the screen and this is the front view of the screen. Of course, since it is a lateral view, you cannot see. I have created a front view image of the screen. Now, in the process, we would be narrowing down the slit. As you can see, as the slit goes down or the air slits narrow, here there is no difference seen on the image. Why? Because still I have not cut the beam. Now, 
At the very point when I have started just to touch the beam, light diffracts and hence the image gets unaccounted and hence the image gets distorted. As I further decrease delta x or I decrease the uncertainty in the position, I can see there is an increase in the uncertainty in the velocity and this increase in the uncertainty in the velocity leads to the widening of the beam as you can see. As the slits go narrower, there is an uncertainty v which is increasing here which is maximum. So this was an experimental setup to determine the Heisenberg's uncertainty principle. Thank you for watching this video. For more content, stay tuned to Ikeda and subscribe to Ikeda.